Welcome back. Here are your halftime numbers brought to you by Tim Hortons, proud sponsor of the CFL. Jocko? Yeah, you're talking about that voice, David. We got uh, one and a half left. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's critical I of the Toronto Argos last week for not using Corey Boyd enough. Seven carries in the first half last week against Hamilton. He's got nine this time, 33 yards. I want to see them use him more in the second half. Let him have over 20 carries, and I believe that Cleo Lemon, with the way he's playing, they'll find a way to win this football game. And I'm thinking G. Roy's happy with the 191 yards passing. He spoke with Farhan Lalji. Less than 30 yards of offense in the first quarter, but things really changed in the second. What was the difference? You know, we started out slow. But uh, we got ourselves together and just, just started playing football. Um, you know, we, we, we just settled down. Casey seemed to settle down as well. Just talk about his demeanor in the huddle as he started to gain some confidence. Oh, he's definitely confident. You know, he just had to relax a little bit. I think everybody's excited to be to be playing and playing at home. So, um, like I said, we just had to settle down and, and get the thing going. Thanks, Jura. Thank you. 21-15 BC with former Lion Jay Pottinger. Let's go down to Farhan Lalji. Jay, in the first quarter, you had their offense under wraps. What happened in that second quarter? Uh, you know, we, we let printers uh, start running around. Uh, we let their running backs get out in the flats, catch some passes. Uh, we're hurting ourselves. Real uh, interesting combination. They've got Jonas Davis, who's so tough to contain, and then Messam, who can power it, and he did that against you at the goal line. Take us through that play. Uh, you know what? Yeah, they, they pulled a the guard. Uh, Messam's a big boy. I uh, took him on, but uh, you know what? He, he got me on that one, so I'm hoping the second half I get another shot at him. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, no problem. Jay Pottinger, who used to wear the orange and black and white of the BC Lions. Now in Argo, Casey Printers picking up where he left off last week against the Montreal Alouettes and looked on form in that first half. Well, he sure did, Casey Printers. Moving around a little bit more, using his legs. As I mentioned in that first half, I'd like to see Casey Printers get on the run sometimes when he's, when he's scrambling around. He's making some plays, throwing the ball in those situations, but his legs are a weapon. He's proven that in the past. Don't want Casey Printers to forget that aspect of his game. Casey Printers only throwing it just above 52% on the season, but 15 of 23 in the first half, 190 yards in the air, and the touchdown. The touchdown to Jonas Davis. Jerome Messam had two on the ground. Lions have really done a nice job mixing and matching a very well-balanced offense today. Well, it has been, and that's what you have to do sometimes when you lose one of your key components, as they did with Jamal Robertson not being unavailable today due to injury, particularly that backfield. You heard Farhan talk to Jay Pottinger about the off-speed, the fastball and the curveball. Second half underway now. Andrew Harris on the run behind a block, still on his feet. Harris is swung. It's a foot race now. Andrew Harris to the 30, to the 20, and finally brought down. Take it even closer. And it's going to be another 15 for the horse collar tackle. We're inside the 15, half the distance, but what a run by Andrew Harris. Looked like he was stopped inside his own 40, but squirted out of trouble. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. Corner number 33, horse collar tackle. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. Watch this, Andrew Harris, and then you'll see the horse collar tackle after a 71-yard return, Dwayne. Well, it looked like he was dead here because he was too close to his wedge, so he's running right into contact, but bounces and gets that left hand down to keep his balance. Meanwhile, probably 10 of those Argos thought he was down too. So with a penalty inside the 10-yard line, Casey Printers. Check down here. Davis cuts back. Jonas Davis looking end zone. Straight arm and is knocked out of bounds. So you see the kick return skills that Jonas Davis brings to the offensive aspect of the BC Lions football team. He gets Willie Middlebrooks in space. Middlebrooks is a defender who's going to come from the outside. He's responsible for contain, meaning he's got to keep him outside in. A little stutter step freezes Middlebrooks. And Davis bounces to the outside to turn it into a positive play. Lin Jay Shell knocking him out of bounds. Sprinters in shotgun on second and goal. He'll throw and open again. Touchdown, Stephen Black. Two weeks in a row, he finds the CFL end zone. Welcome to the Canadian Football League. Well, just like that, the BC Lions open up a wider lead 
All set up by that monster kick return by Andrew Harris. Casey Printers, it seems to be the theme of the day. Wide open receiver. Stephen Black. Lay off the center, man. Lay off the center. Out of Memphis again, the cousin of Terrell Owens. With his own TD. Point after by McCallum. Lions open up. A big lead now, 28-15, third quarter in Vancouver. Two weeks in a row, Stephen Black has a touchdown. Nice debut for him as Chad Owens tries to pick his way upfield to the 35-yard line. And BC Lions also very proficient in the red zone. So far today, they are four for four. And they operate just under 50% on the season. Yeah, the BC Lions doing a tremendous job in close, and it's the difference in this football game when you think back to the Toronto Argonauts, particularly that first possession, turning the ball over on downs, the one-yard line. Argos came out flying here today. Brought it down there, the goal line, then gave up the football. They did have an 8-0 lead, but have been playing with a deficit ever since. And a fumble on the ground. Looks like the Argos may have got it back. You talk about football being a game of inches. The Toronto Argonauts are inches away from having the lead. We just mentioned Andre Dury's catch early in this football game. Dury inches away from getting in. He's not in. Instead, the Argos get stopped. Don't score when they could have scored on that play. And then the last play of the first half, Chad Owens on the missed field goal return. Picks up a couple of blocks and gets to the outside. He goes to hurdle the kicker, Paul McCallum. When he comes down, that foot barely touches the sideline. Second and nine, Cleo Lemon is in trouble and he's sandwiched and he's sacked. And a huge loss for the Toronto Argos. The Lions feast on Lemon. Well, the BC Lions get both defensive ends coming on this play. One coming from the inside and Karan Williams coming from the opposite far side. Cleo Lemon's got nowhere to go on this play. Karan Williams all the way around that loop. Solomon Elamimian from the other side. So Lemon's got nowhere to go. First sack of the afternoon by the BC Lions. Jamie Borum. All bouncing back now. Once again, it's Harris. Inside Toronto territory. It's Karan Charlie Williams. Nice. Charlie, what up? Ma, I love you. Let's go. Former star at UMass. Former Montreal Alouette. His first season with the Lions. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. CFL All-Star. Great yeah. Cup champion last year. Karan Williams slowly making that adjustment out to the hey, defensive end spot after starring at defensive tackle for Montreal the last couple of years. Lions have a chance to really put the hammer down. Already a 13-point advantage. Play action, Printers. He's in trouble now. Going deep though, and over the leaping Stephen Black, who wanted a penalty call but will not get it. That ball would have clearly sailed over his head. Yeah, I think the fans here at Empire Field lobbied for it a little bit harder even than Stephen Black did. Jordan Younger, the man in coverage, who gets a hold of Stephen Black, but this ball was well overthrown, uncatchable. Any discussion of a call is moot. BC Lions are trying to pick up their first win at home this season. Their first win on these grounds in a long time. Again, playing in this temporary facility while BC plays. He's getting a brand new retractable roof ready for next year. Printers second down now, and he's dropped. Big defensive play by Ronald Flemons, the defensive end. Just his second sack of the season. Flemons comes from the right side, gets around to the middle on this pass rush. Ultimately brings down the Argos quarterback. Initially outside rush, then works his way back in. Off Dane Randall. So these teams trade big sacks here for losses. A wobbly kick from Paul McCallum that bounces out of bounds. 
The 22 yard line, 28 15, the hometown Lions lead. Welcome back to Empire Fields. Plenty of talk about the Argos offensive line coming into this game. Three changes and early in this second half it hasn't looked good and following the last series where they only had a one yard gain and then took a sack. The Argos offensive line coach just tore into their group. They didn't make any technical adjustments. He just said to his team you are getting beat off the ball and you've got to get better at the point of attack and it's just a man man on man thing right now. It's got nothing to do with uh, schemes at all. Needs some protection for Cleo Lemon. It's picked off by Dante Marsh. The BC Lions in every aspect of this game are taking over. Here it's the defense. Dante Marsh comes up big. Not bad for a guy who looked like he wasn't going to be ready to play today after a separated shoulder last week against Montreal and Dante Marsh has his second interception of the season. Well, Dante Marsh just ran that route for James Robinson. Came underneath him on the play, anticipated where the receiver was going, anticipated the ball, came up with the pick. First pick thrown by Cleo Lemon today, ninth of the season. Slow developing play in the backfield, but Jonas Davis squirms right side and is knocked out of bounds. Well, slow to develop, but Jonas Davis speeds things up once he takes the rock. Great acceleration to get to the outside. Davis came into this game with 12 carries for 117 yards. But we saw a flash of what this guy could do against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders when he had three carries for 84 yards, including one of 51 yards. Lions moving closer to that red zone again. Second down and six. Printers. Harris Jackson. Turned one way, then the other, but the ball overthrown, and so this will bring out Paul McCallum for his second field goal attempt of the afternoon. He's 0 for 1. Well, Paris Jackson had a step on the defender. Evan McCullough on that play, but just couldn't get coordinated with where that ball was going. Oldest player in the Canadian Football League, 40 year old McCallum, a rare miss earlier. That was from the 50. It was almost taken back by Chad Owens in the final play of the first half. It's from the 34, where Paul McCallum is normally money, and he is. Extends the lead 31 15 BC. The Blue Bombers and the Rough Riders in the Banjo Bowl. Toronto Argonauts down 16 now. Corey Boyd, a straight arm and a first down and more running room. Boyd still on his feet and gets hit hard, jolted by Solomon Alamimian. Corey Boyd is down and hurt. Well, Boyd was on the receiving end of the helmet to helmet shot here from Alamimian. Remember, Corey Boyd suffered a, a concussion back in the Toronto Argonauts training camp. So this is an immediate concern for the Argo training staff. That concussion in training camp almost meant that Corey Boyd did not become a Toronto Argonaut. Jim Barker said, stay around, kid. We're going to keep you around here. Even with the injury and Jim Barker concerned, and when Corey Boyd was told that he could play in the regular season, tears came to his eyes when he knew he was back with the Argos getting a chance to play in the CFL. He has been a star this season. Well, he sure has, and you see the concern, not just for Corey Boyd, the football player, but for Corey Boyd, the person, on the part of Jim Barker right out there on the field. We've seen this from Barker a number of times this year when his players have been down. Very similar situation when Jermaine Copeland was injured against Montreal a few weeks ago. Here it is again. Boyd was just off balance and Elamimian came flying across the field. Two big bodies moving at a high rate of speed. That helmet to helmet collision leaves Corey Boyd down on the field. Elamimian comes from a long way to make this play. Number 56 right in the middle of your screen closing. Almost even looked from Elamimian's position that the contact came a half second earlier than he expected as well. Well, here is good news. Corey Boyd's on his feet. And he'll be assisted to the sideline. A great display of sportsmanship there. 
from Solomon Elamimian, came over and gave him a tap on the shoulder. Another first year player. First year player in Corey Boyd. Speaking of Jermaine Copeland was actually practicing with his team this week. Corey and Jermaine Copeland, when a lot of people felt that he might be out of the lineup for the entire season, could be back with the Toronto Argo, and that's sooner than later. Yeah, could be back as soon as next week in this Argonaut receiving core, really starting to take shape. Now that first down run by Corey Boyd puts the ball in BC territory. The 11 far side. Mike Bradwell has it. Just out before the first down marker. Well, and here's a sign of the development from Cleo Lemon, just taking his time, getting through his reads, eventually checking down. Gets a nice block on the play from Brian Crawford in the backfield. He's going to step up after the run fake. Gets over here to pick up the blitzing Ryan Phillips. Give his quarterback time to get through those reads and check down to Bradwell. Second short yardage, just second down and two. The Argonauts have to find an answer to this BC momentum right now. Plowing forward for the first down is Jeff Johnson. Let's go down to Farhan. Well, the news not good for Corey Boyd right now. They're giving him a, a full set of uh, examinations right here, but he apparently told the trainer that he was out cold at contact, and he laid motionless for a while. It took a good 30 or 40 seconds before his legs actually started moving. They're checking his neck as well. There may have been some whiplash that goes along with any potential concussion. Uh, we're still waiting official words from the team, but right now it doesn't look good. He looks very dazed. All right, thank you, Farhan. First down, Argos. Johnson gets the rock again. A penalty flag flew at the snap. Ron Williams again in on the tackle. Karan Williams has been a force, as he often is, today for the BC Lions. Illegal formation, no end. That penalty is declined. Second down. Johnson picked up a yard, so it will be second down and nine after the Lions declined the penalty. Well, one guy who's been quiet for the Toronto Argonauts has been their go-to receiver, Chad Owens. Might be a good opportunity to give him a look. It's on the top of your screen. Lemon pressurized again. Coming back to the ball is Spencer Watt, but well short of a first down. We called the name Chad Owens prior to this play. Number two for the Argos ends up wide open. He's going to go in motion and then just come on a drag route across the field. He's left uncovered by the BC defense, but because of the pressure in Cleo Lemon's face, he can't get it to him. This is a perfect opportunity to use Chad Owens' speed, getting him the ball in that situation in space. Grant Shaw. This is not his range, only 10 of 17 this season from the 30 to 40 yard line and misses again. He struggled between the 30 and 49 yard line. Grant Shaw and the BC Lions will give up a single point, so the lead is now 15. Home turf, their new turf, their temp facility. This season, seven minutes to go, third quarter, have a 15-point lead. Casey Printer sets up shop again. Harris Jackson on the far side, a couple of yards on that pass from Printers. Gain of four on the play, it will be second and six. Harris Jackson, we talked about his breakout game last week with 94 yards. Show how much he had struggled. He was averaging just about 36 yards a game prior to that. Down the sideline again, right in front of the first down marker is Jackson. Local star here as a high school player. Well, interested spectator for sure. Probably the most interested spectator 
probably would like a tie his owner David Braley who just happens to own the BC Lions and the Toronto Argonauts yeah the good news if you're David Braley today is I guess you're guaranteed to win you're guaranteed to win unless of course there's a tie <laughs> <laughs> but David Braley has both of these franchises next for an air very interesting situation signs the paychecks of both of these teams and that ball is just short of a first down and the BC Lions are going to trot out Travis Lule for the short yardage play it will be third in inches and the Lions are going to go for it in this situation try and keep a little bit of momentum we saw Wally Buono earlier in this game in his own territory elect to kick where it was third and a long yard versus this third and a short yard but field position also a factor here is they're a little bit closer to midfield obviously that lowers the risk in the gamble Jerome Messam in the backfield Lule behind center third and inches and looks like Lule's forward progression again this will depend on the spot the first down marker is right on the 45 yard line and it is a first down <laughs> Holly Blano has a little sigh of relief there already had one gamble go against him well, Travis Lule did a nice job with just a quick hesitation to wait for a soft spot to develop and then lunged in there in a hurry AC printers Four games against the Argos. This is one of his best that he's had. Printer's still in trouble and is dropped again for another sack. Alex Busby this time. Third sack of the afternoon for the Toronto D. Well, that Argonaut defensive line getting it done today after coming in with just nine sacks on the season. Alex Busby from that wide side defensive end position. Works against the tackle. Dane Randolph just beats him with speed. A little hand slap. So the blocker can't engage. Gets around the edge. Able to put some pressure on the printers. Now second and long. Second 15. Argo defense looking to provide a spark now. Here's the rush again. The printers. Down he goes. And a penalty flag. Flew just before printers was sacked. Oh, with the BC Lions grabbing the momentum in this football game, the Argo defensive line is taking it upon themselves to change the flow. Holding. BC number 59. That penalty is declined. Third down. Left tackle Dane Randolph. The guilty party, and so they will kick it away. And again, the Argos might find themselves with some enviable field position. Chad Owens is back at his 35-yard line. Paul McCallum. We'll put his foot into it near his 20. Angles it to the Argo sideline. Ball bounces backwards. Will be a no yards call, but fumbled, but it is no yards. Chad Owens dropped the ball, but a no yards call anyway, so it will be Toronto football when we come back. Argos need some touchdowns. No yards. DC number two. There's Corey Boyd, who has become a household name in the Toronto area with his exploits this season on the field. His first in the CFL looks a lot more alert than he did a few moments ago when he was rattled by Solomon Elamimian. Appeared to be concussed, even knocked out. And so it appears that if the Toronto Argonauts are to come back in this football game, they're going to have to do it without their number one offensive weapon. With the no yards call into BC territory. Lemon lost the football, ran into Brian Crawford, was in for blocking help, and now another second and long situation for the Argos. Things just closed in on Cleo Lemon here, that BC Lions defensive line, doing a good job collapsing the pocket. Lemon looked as if he wanted to throw it out on a little swing screen to the left. Chad Owens, number two, is in the backfield. He's going to swing out to the left. Corey Banks 
follows him out there. And now Jeff Johnson on the receiving end of that little screen pass on second and long. Jonathan Brown was rewarded with that sack previously, but as you saw, Cleo Lemon also ran into Brian Crawford. JB, Jonathan Brown having a good game against his former mates. That's two sacks for the former Argo this afternoon. He's licking his lips in anticipation of this game. Earlier this season, Jonathan Brown didn't think he'd get a call. No, he really didn't. Jonathan Brown was working at University of Tennessee, his alma mater, finishing off his degree there, helping do some coaching with the football team. Jamie Borum. Once again, it's Andrew Harris. It'll be a long field this time for the BC Lions with just over three minutes to go in this third quarter. BC Lions with that Olympic Stadium now being renovated and a retractable roof put on it. Playing in their temporary facility. Morris Davis again. He has got some wheels and great cuts. Leonis Davis, you see some different play calling that the BC Lions are using in their run game when Davis is in there. That time a, a quick toss where he gets a little bit of a head start on the play to try and take advantage of his speed. But because he has different assets than Jamal Robertson, Jacques Chapdelaine is going to try to take advantage of those different things. Hales from Oakland, California, played at San Jose State. There he goes again. Second down. Looks like he'll move the sticks again, and he will. First down, BC. Once again, Davis just gets a little bit offset to get in that toss position so that he's ahead of the quarterback as opposed to starting off directly behind the quarterback in an eye formation as you would typically see on a toss play. With his quickness, you want to give him that extra step and see if you can get him to the outside and threaten the D. Not enormous yards by any stretch today for Davis, but combined with Messam, it's a big afternoon. Printers to the sideline and unable to keep it in bounds is Emmanuel Arsenal. And there's a penalty flag behind the play, and it's going against the Argos after KC Printers had Major foul. hurled Welcome the ball. The Kevin Huntley. Corner number 94. 15 yards. Roughed up KC Printers. And Jim Barker is going to hate this. Well, Kevin Huntley, whether this is being called a late hit or a blow to the head, really a late hit as he hit him on the shoulder, but the ball was gone, and it was clear it was going to be gone. Sometimes immediate tough. first down. Well, sometimes difficult to be a defensive lineman, knowing that there's a mandate out there to protect the quarterbacks. Such a fine line. Now the least penalized team in the league, the Argos. Most penalized team in this game against the team most penalized in the league. Printers, nowhere to go. Finally able to just get rid of the football. The Argos continue to get after Casey Printers and force him to, to hurry up in that passing rhythm, forcing him to scramble and step up in the pocket. Printers able to elude them, avoid the sack in that situation. Before this ball game, the BC Lions have given up the most sacks in the Canadian Football League, and there you can see the pressure. A lot of hurries, a lot of hits, and four sacks. There was a jump, a penalty flag. Free play here for Casey Printers. Emmanuel Arsenal has the first down. Looked like the Argos jumped, or were they drawn? Well, first indication is that it's the defensive end, Alex Busby, who jumped which would cause BC to decline this penalty. Offside, corner number 96. That penalty is declined, first down. And confirmed it was Alex Busby on the play, but Emmanuel Arsenault with the first down catch leads BC to decline. Jim Barker this year instilling a level of discipline with the Argos. Their penalty numbers way down. To Hurting them on this drive, and there's Stephen Black on the hitch and go. And he goes into Toronto territory for another first down. It's just a classic hitch screen from the BC Lions. They get three receivers out to one side, two guys block, the other guy steps back and catches the football. 
Stephen Black does a nice job moving the chains. Again, made his debut last week. Just one catch, but a touchdown. Already has a touchdown today. Stephen Black gets Paris Jackson out in front. Nassim. Up the middle. Pick up of four yards. The BC Lions already had the luxury of a very good receiving core. It's been together for a couple of years. Emmanuel Arsenal made his presence felt last year, but the presence and the addition of Stephen Black seems to have made them better. Well, it sure does, and that's the one spot where the BC Lions have struggled for a couple of years, looking for someone to really take hold of that position, from Rufus Skillern to Ryan Greismullen. Earlier this season, Derek Armstrong had his shot at that job. Stephen Black's looking to make it his own. BC Lions 2-7 and seven, certainly seem to have some momentum with them after that win in Montreal last week. Our numbers brought to you by Tim Hortons, proud sponsor of the CFL. Well, the BC Lions are doing a nice job of making plays, and that's something that seemed to be missing for them for a couple weeks, both offensively and defensively. You've got some guys stepping. Very good today. Well, they have looked very good, and when you throw into the mix, as Milt Stiegel mentioned at lunchtime, some of the other bodies they've got available in that backfield, Jamal Lee, Roly Lamballa, some good Canadian depth. It's going to be an interesting combination. Paul McCallum puts another through the uprights. <laughs> and a smile. Two for three day for McCallum. From the 43-yard line, 34-16 now the score. He had a good chance to sit down with Paul McCallum yesterday to talk about this renaissance in his career. Maybe sparked by a little competition and injury last year. BC Lions have also another very good kicker on their 46-man roster. Well, they sure do. Sean White, who played for the Lions a big chunk of last year when Paul McCallum was injured. Got great depth in the position. You always want to have that when you've got a 40-year-old starter. But Paul McCallum welcomed the, welcomed the competition going into training camp. And I think that, that really benefited him, quite frankly. Pushed himself. And he's having an outstanding season. Paul McCallum with so many young players in the game. A lot of young kickers, first-year kickers this season. Uh, Canadian kickers. Paul McCallum said, you know, they, some of these guys were just babies when I came into the league back in 93. But at the same time, he said it was a very similar situation to a guy he used to look up to, one of the greatest kickers of all time, Louis Pasaglia. Yeah, and growing up here in B.C., as Paul did, certainly a guy that he was well aware of, but, uh, but now able to empathize with a guy that he probably used to give a hard time to. For being a little bit older. Older but getting better. Paul McCallum Chad Owens into traffic. 38 yard line. Well, Jonathan Brown a guy who spent six years in double blue looking pretty good in orange and black here today. John started this game off by coming up with a big third down play. Goal line stuff of Corey Boyd. Continuing via force getting after quarterback Cleo Lemon. The guy who was brought in to add a little bit of leadership to this BC Lions defense. They had so many young guys. Delivered the leadership right away and now as he's getting into game shape, he's delivering some plays too. In his 100th career game today, Jonathan Brown. And his first against his old teammates. Lions bring some heat. Cleo Lemon. First catch of the afternoon from Brandon Rideau comes here early in the fourth quarter. Well, Brandon Rideau has given up a lot of playing time to Ryan Christian. The Argos looking for a little bit more consistency out of their big receiver, number 16. Guy who's been a great downfield threat for them, but has been inconsistent catching the football. Ryan Christian getting a few more of those reps with the first group. One of the Argos' leading receivers is Brandon Rideau. Argos, everybody in motion here. And almost picked off. That had touchdown written all over it. Dante Marsh, the intended pass for Mike Bradwell. Anton McKenzie also in the vicinity. We saw Dante Marsh intercept an out route that was intended for James Robinson earlier in this game here. Nearly steps in front of that hook by Mike Bradwell. Bradwell, the receiver, waiting Whoa. for the ball instead of working back towards that rock. Dante oh. Marsh just cuts underneath. Good thing he's got the hands of a defensive player. 
Argos catch a huge break. And they capitalize now. Lemon deep drop. In trouble. And he goes down again. Solomon Alamimi in another sack. Well, and suddenly the BC Lions look a little bit more like the team people expected to see at the start of the year. Solomon Elamimian, middle linebacker, starts from depth, but he's going to come on the blitz on this play. Lions stack the box. Elamimian loops around the left. As the scramble happens, fights off the block of the running back, Jeff Johnson. 23-year-old Elamimian. Playing middle linebacker now for the Lions. Start at the University of Hawaii. Jamie Borum. Hand over and kick. Justin George draws a no yards call. George bursting outside. Finally dropped into Toronto territory and at five yards onto that for the no yards. Lions roaring again. Hardy Lion fans. Years past here have been, of course, inside a BC place. They're putting a retractable roof on the downtown stadium, so they play at Empire Field now for this year. KC Printers. Pass for Jerome Messum. It's underthrown. Once again, the pressure affecting KC Printers. Can't fault the Argo defensive line for the team's struggles today. This has been one of their better outings of the season. Four sacks by that Argo front four. Winters has been able to move the ball, though, and again, they have been very good inside the red zone. Trying to get to the red zone. Pump fake, Critter's in trouble. Fumbled the football. And the Lions, no, they don't have it back. It's still loose. Ronald Flemings has it, and he's got a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. You better pick it up. He fumbled the ball at the goal line. Is that a touchdown or not? I think Ronald Flemings fumbled the ball before he got to the end zone. This is unbelievable. O'Neal Wilson has it. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. It's a touchdown, but... It might be a challenge. We're going to take a look at this right away and see if Ronald Clemens lost the ball before he breaks the plane of the goal line or not. Oh, he lost the it. Ball's out. That's a fumble. You'll see a yellow flag shortly. Ronald Clemens had a touchdown and lost the football. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the Argos tried to line up and kick before the ball of water could throw that flag. The BC Lions, even after Casey Printers gave up the ball, recover in the end zone. Oh my goodness. This is something you do not see every day. Ronald Flemings coughs it up on the goal line. It was touchdown. BC is challenging. Will be taken the away. And touchdown the score. We'll review the play. You've got to give O'Neal Wilson credit here for not giving up on the play because nobody was going to catch Flemons, but because he hustled on the play, he was in position to recover this fumble. Now again, Flemons looks back, tries to get to the ball, got his hands on it, but wasn't down. O'Neal Wilson had the football. I cannot believe what I just saw. Well, Jay Pottinger strips the ball from Casey Printers. Both teams have shots at it. Flemons ultimately the man who scoops it up, races towards the end zone. He's got it in his hand. It's not tucked in his elbow. He pulls it away from his body, and that's where he loses it. Can you say Leon Lett? That is crazy. Alex Busby can't believe it. One of the most ridiculous plays of the season. Ronald Flemons all alone. And you're right, credit O'Neal Wilson to come in because if he fumbles there and nobody's around, he picks it up, it's still a touchdown. Now you can see all the other Argos about 20 yards behind them starting the celebration because Ronald Flemons was going in untouched. But he oh. didn't need to be touched to lose this ball. This guy is going to be on highlight reels for a long time. We had a sack, we had a fumble, 
Then we had another fumble. All on one play. After review, the Toronto player fumbled the ball before he crossed the line. Just want to hide. Yeah, the thing is, it's tough to hide when you're six foot five, 270 pounds. Ronald Flemings. Touchdown that would change the game again. Can you believe this? Just couldn't squeeze it. Well, he took the ball away. You always talk about when you're carrying the football, covering the points of that ball. Keeping it tucked in against the body, and Ronald Clemens moved it away from his body, and that's when it slipped out of his hand. Something you might see in Pop Warner football or kids football could even happen to the best. <laughs> Seen anything like that, except on highlight reels? <laughs> ever part of any game that you've ever been in, even going back to it as a kid? Well, not part of a game that I've participated in, but as you said, it's, it's one of those that you just see on the, the highlights or if you're Ronald Flemons, the low lights. Incredible. Still loads of time left in this ball game as Flemons now trying to make amends and the crush after he received that football. G. Roy Simon on the receiving end and so the BC Lions will punt the ball away key for the Argos is trying to put this behind them well and they did a pretty good job of it coming up with that two and out but they still can't get the seven points back Some blocking room and Chad Owens brings it to the midfield stripe and the Argos now trying to pick up Ronald Flemons after he dropped it. Well the special teams player of the week and player of the year awards always seem to go to guys who are returners. Sometimes it's the kicker scoring the points. My special teams player, number 95 for the Argos, Ajiro Kowali. This guy is doing stuff like this, play in and play out. He is the epitome of a special teams warrior. Andrew Okwali out of LSU. He's another great special teams player. Jason Racky. The Argos now. Good field position out of the backfield now. Spencer Watt. Only a couple of yards. Given a lick right there by Stanley Franks. Now this play is well defended by the BC Lions. Just kind of seem to be reading the Toronto Argonauts mail right now, anticipating what's coming. Toronto Argos have to wonder if that goal line is cursed early in the ball game. Chance to punch it in. Third down play went astray, and then Ronald Clemens instant touchdown way offside. Argos jumped on the far side. Penalty flags fly. Offside, Toronto number 89, five-yard penalty, remains second down. So Watt had picked up three yards on that earlier catch and just put his team back two more yards on the five-yard penalty, so second and 12. Leo Lemon coming off his best outing five days ago in Hamilton, 350-plus yards passing to get a first down here. Here's the rush. Lemon, down he goes. Jonathan Brown again. JB coming back to haunt his old team here today. What a pickup. Jonathan Brown has been and will become even more for the BC Lions in midseason. Jonathan Brown lines up on the nose, fights off a double team here, and as Cleo Lemon tries to step up, Who's waiting there for him? But the veteran, Jonathan Brown. Jamie Borm, end over end. Andrew Harris dropped it. Picked it up. 
from his 35 yard line. AC Printers back at work here and Cleo Lemon in the Argo offense is flatlined here in the second half. Well, Jonathan Brown and the rest of that Lions defense certainly playing a role in that flat line. Jim Barker has seen this before only five days ago where his Argo team just could not mount any momentum against the Tiger Cats. Lost on the Labor Day game. They've suffered back-to-back -back losses. Stephen Black with the catch and for the first time in quite some time there is concern again with the Toronto Argonauts who began the season five and two. And the way it's looking right now, with just under nine minutes to go, they could suffer their third straight loss. So the Toronto Argonauts are one of those teams that is very competitive. They're right in the mix in, in the Canadian Football League, right in the playoff race. They won some games early because they got some breaks, made some plays when they had opportunities. Now they're losing because they're not making plays when they're given those opportunities. Printers, sideline, and overthrows Paris Jackson. How much does that play as Printers comes up hobbling as he did a week ago in Montreal? How much is that play by Ronald Flemons going to be talked about if this score remains the same? Well, that play will continue to be talked about, but I suspect one of the hot topics of conversation among Argo's faithful is going to be the health of their star running back, Corey Boyd, and how soon he might be able to get back into their lineup. And Boyd getting rocked by... Solomon Alaminian. The hands in, hands in! Here to be concussed is Chad Owens. No yards call will advance it 15 yards with just over eight minutes to go. BC owning an 18 point advantage. 34 16 BC. Argos have to find a way to get to the end zone here if they have any hope. BC defense has really picked it up here in the second half. Well, you just have a feeling of how the different elements of the BC Lions football team, the offense, the defense, and the special teams are just feeding off each other and building on each other's momentum. Another second down play for Toronto. Not been able to move the football at all here in this second half. Lemon stands in over the top and dropping the football. Andre Dury. Well, Dury was thinking about running before he caught this one. Pulled his hands away to try and turn before the ball had actually arrived. He's the inside receiver towards the bottom of the screen. He's going to run down and sit down just inside that hash mark. Those hands twitched. Just reacted to the ball before it was actually there. Didn't look it all the way in. Jamie Bourne. The Argos have only scored one point in the second half. It was this guy who ignited the Lions early in the third quarter, Andrew Harris. Uh, for as much as there's an 18-point margin in this ball game, the Argos have just been off by inches. We spoke earlier in this game, first possession, Andre Dury stopped inches from the goal line. The Argos end up stuffed on third and short. Chad Owens touching the sideline by inches. Ronald Clemens fumbles inches from the goal line. So close for the Toronto Argonauts, yet so far away on the scoreboard. And again, just like five days ago against the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and I'm sure Jim Parker doesn't have to be told that, they just did, had problems finishing in the first half at Ivor Wynn on the Labor Day game. No points against the Tiger Cats. The last two games, and they've only scored one point in this second half here. And this was a team early in the season that was known, became known for their fourth quarter comebacks. Yeah, quickly earning a reputation as the cardiac kids of the CFL, including a game against BC. A lot different this time around. In that last meeting, it was the BC Lions who may have thrown the game away in a misstep by Emmanuel Arsenal on a pass from Travis Lule, a game that he makes that catch at that time. BC Lions probably win that ball game, and Argos took the momentum, seized it, and eventually won the game. That one culminating with a late 41-yard 
interception return for a touchdown by Byron Parker. Second down now, 10 yards to go for the Lions. Keeps throwing, he does. Printers to G. Roy Simon. And now moves into fifth place all time on the CFL yardage receiving list. And congratulations and happy birthday to G. Roy Simon as he moves past Ray Elgard. Take possession of that fifth spot. Using up the clock now is Printers. Jonas Davis retreats now. Alex Busby chasing him and finally gets just over the line of scrimmage. Giroy Simon again celebrating his 35th birthday on this September 11th. Um, no doubt one of the guys in our studio, the guy at the top of that list, Milt Stiegel, is smiling as his former protege, G. Roy Simon, the two were teammates early in Simon's career in Winnipeg, continues to climb that list. Back pedal by Printers. Back to get it again is Davis. G. Roy Simon just continuing to do here today what he has done throughout his career. Just makes plays. Terrific after yards after the catch receiver. Very reliable second down receiver. Game breaker when he needs to be. Mr. All Around, G. Roy Simon. Paul McCallum. Now Chad Owens. Tiptoes on the sideline, a little head fake. To the 48 yard line with 4.41 to go. Leo Lemon. Now time is imperative. Right now, they have got to find a way to get it downfield. They could not against Hamilton. You saw the inefficiency they exhibited in fourth quarters the last two games. Well, at 18 points, it's a three-possession football game for the Toronto Argonauts. So, as you said, it's got to happen right now, and it's got to come at some point, Rod, in the form of a big play. 257 yards in the air for Lemon. his 10th CFL start. Says he is growing as a quarterback. Chad Owens, did he catch this? Says he did. Trying to sell it, and they're saying incomplete pass. Two on two, Davis Sanchez all over Chad Owens. Another product of the University of Hawaii. Well, Chad Owens does a nice job coming back to the football here, but this one's just going to sneak through his arms and bounce off the turf. A little acting job there by Owens. Very quiet today, pass catching area. He has been one of Cleo Lemon's game breakers. Okay, uh, he's gonna go to the okay. short side. Potential one-on-one -on -one matchup here. Good time to go to your game breaker. Lemon looked his way, but is in trouble again. And Cleo Lemon is sacked again. Solomon Aluminian has his hands around him, and so too Brent Johnson. Well, there are two factors at play here for the BC Lions defense as to why they're able to get so much pressure. We've seen the tribute dance, by the way, from both Brent Johnson and Jonathan Brown doing their best Aaron Hunt impression. But this Lions defense, combination of the score and their thinking pass all the way, the other issue, the absence of Corey Boyd in the running game that goes along with him means these guys are teeing off on the pass rush because they don't have to honor the run. And Corey Boyd who can hang in and also help with the blocking, but it's all going downhill for the Argos. Since that late first half gallop by Chad Owens that was called out of bounds, they have not been able to mount much of anything. Well, this is going to be a painful film session after this one for the Toronto Argonauts to see the opportunities that have slipped through their fingers. Again, no Corey Boyd. See how he reacts the next couple of days for the Argos' next game. Four receivers to the right of Casey Printers trying to seal this. Penalty flag flies, likely a holding call. Talked about 
G. Roy Simon celebrating a birthday on September 11th, you know, and a date that will always live in our history, September Legal 11th. block, hands to the face. DC number 66. That penalty's declined. They had a moment of silence Checking before out. the game in remembrance of those who fell in the terrorist attacks, but G. Roy Simon was thinking about going to Hamilton at the time back in 2001 on his birthday, and when the attacks happened, he could not fly. There was a no-fly zone. Eventually, he ended up in B.C. Had those attacks never happened, he likely would have been a Hamilton Tiger Cat. Down he goes, field, and G. Roy Simon calls it in near the 20. On cue. And a penalty flag on the play. One of the greatest BC Lions of all time right there. G. Roy Simon, three-minute warning. Seven catches, 134 yards. Superman again.